Welcome back to the series on searching and sorting. In this part, we present a simple sorting algorithm, selection sort. In order to exploit the power and efficiency of binary search, we need to have a sorted array. This means that we need a sorting algorithm. There are lots of different sorting algorithms, each with different properties, variations, advantages, and disadvantages. Here's just a small sample of the types of sorting algorithms that have been developed. Some are efficient, others are inefficient. To keep things simple, we'll start with one of the simplest sorting algorithms, selection sort. Here's the basic idea. We'll search through the array to find the minimal element. Then we'll swap it with the first element, placing the smallest element at the front of the array where it belongs. We then proceed to do the same thing with the remaining elements. Each iteration of the algorithm selects the minimum element and places it at the front, giving the algorithm its name. In general, on the ith iteration, we search through the elements from index i up to n minus 1 to find the minimal element among them. We then swap it with the ith element. We stop when i is equal to n minus 1 because having sorted the first n minus 1 elements, the last element is where it needs to be. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have an unsorted array of eight elements. We'll only run through the first few iterations of the algorithm. We start at the front and iterate through to see if we can find something smaller than 42. Two is our new smallest element. We then proceed with the rest of the array, but fail to find anything smaller. At that point, we go ahead and swap 42 and two, and we know that the first element is now where it needs to be. So we proceed with the rest of the array. We start with the unsorted area, 42 will be assumed to be our smallest element, and we compare it with other elements until we find something that's smaller. We compare it with the rest of the array, and we find that seven is the smallest element of the remaining elements. So we go ahead and swap it with 42. At this point, the first two elements in the array are sorted, and the algorithm would proceed in the same manner for the remaining elements always selecting the minimal element among the remaining and placing it where it needs to be. Let's actually implement this and test it and see. Here I've got some starter code. We have a function to print out an array, the same array from our example. Now let's go ahead and implement selection sort. It's a void function because we're going to be making changes to the given array and not returning anything. The array is no longer const because we will be making changes to it. First, we'll need an outer for loop. It'll start at i and go up to the second to last element. That's because if we've already sorted the first n minus one elements, then we don't need to sort the last element, it's already where it needs to be. Now for finding the minimal element among elements indexed i up to n minus one. We'll start by assuming that the ith element is our minimum element, and then proceed to go through the rest of the array to see if we can find an element that's less. If the jth element is less than the minimum that we've found so far, we'll go ahead and update our index. Now, after we've found the minimum element, we need to put it where it belongs. So we need to swap the element at min index and the element at the ith index. To swap, we simply place the ith element into a temporary variable place the element from the minimum index into the ith index, and then put our temporary variable back into the min index. Let's test it out. And it works. The second time that we print it out is after we've sorted it. 
Selection sort is a simple algorithm, but it's also naive and inefficient. But just how bad is it? Similar to searching, we'll analyze selection sort by examining the number of comparisons that it makes, sorting an array of size n. On the first iteration, it makes n minus 1 comparisons to find the minimum element. On the second iteration, it only has to make n minus 2 comparisons because it's eliminated one of the elements from consideration, having sorted it and placed it at the front of the list. In general, on the ith iteration, it will make n minus i comparisons. On the last iteration, it only has two elements to compare to find the minimum, so it only makes one comparison. Adding these all up, from last to first, gives us the following summation. You can solve this summation using Gauss's formula. The key conclusion is that selection sort is a quadratic sorting algorithm. The highest order term ignoring constants is n squared. That's the most important term in that equation. Just how bad is this? Consider again our comparisons from the previous part, where we wanted to search through a database of 1 trillion elements. Now consider sorting that same database with 1 trillion elements. Plugging this into our formula, we get that it takes about this many comparisons. This is 500 sextillion comparisons if you're interested. For context, suppose that we run this algorithm on an NVIDIA 1080 Ti graphics card, which offers about 11.3 teraflops. That's 11.3 trillion floating point operations per second. Now this isn't going to be an exact comparison because a flop doesn't necessarily correspond to a single comparison, and we're not guaranteed to always get that kind of performance. But it will provide a rough estimate as to how long it will take to sort this database. 500 sextillion operations at 11.3 trillion operations per second will result in over 1400 years. In other words, selection sort is so bad that it would take on the order of centuries to sort this database. It's also important to understand that this is only a moderately large database. It's nothing compared to true big data databases, or even data that you could find at most mid-level companies. Clearly, selection sort is not a feasible algorithm for even moderately large data sets. Let's look at this yet from another perspective. To get an idea of how inefficient this algorithm is, let's double the input size. We'll go from an array of size n to an array of size 2n. When we do, because of the square term, we get that the number of comparisons is four times more than before. In this case, doubling the input size quadruples the number of operations. This makes the algorithm performance four times slower. This helps to explain why sorting a database of one trillion elements becomes infeasible. In the next part, we'll fix this problem by looking at a more efficient sorting algorithm.